Chester. From Television City in Hollywood, Chrysler Corporation presents Jack Benny. Ben Johnson. Yvonne DiCarlo. Georgia Gibb. John Durant. Starring in Tower of Stars. The brightest stars of Hollywood. Brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. Maker of the five great cars of the forward look. Plymouth. Don. DeSoto. Chrysler. And the exclusive Imperial. Chrysler Corporation. The forward look. Here's your host, Bill Lundigan. You can applaud a little bit if you want. But for a second, I had lost every friend that I had in the world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shower of Stars. And tonight, Chrysler Corporation is proud to present, and you'd better applaud him too, that's all I can say, Proud to present as your master of ceremonies, one of America's truly great comedians, Mr. Jack Benny. <laughs> Didn't recognize him with his new face. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much and good evening. I, uh, you know, this is my last shower of stars of the season. And I must say that I've had a lot of fun doing these shows. And uh, we've had so many wonderful guest stars. I enjoyed working with all of them. And uh, during all this time, we've only had one disappointment. Because, you see, tonight, besides the guests that have already been mentioned, we were supposed to have had Mr. Yule Brenner on the show. But we just couldn't get together. It wasn't the money or anything like that, but he insisted on wearing his hat. <laughs> See, and my hiring Yule Brenner for television, wearing a hat, makes about as much sense as signing Jane Mansfield for a radio show. <laughs> But uh, Mr. Brenner has been a little bit sensitive lately about taking his hat off. And I can understand it, too, because uh, he's the only man in Hollywood whose head was banned in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have really a great treat in store for you, because tonight, for the first time on live television... Van Johnson is going to make an appearance, and I want to tell you, all week he's been so jittery and nervous, I never, I never thought we'd even get him to come on. In fact, yesterday, during uh, rehearsal, we went to the little, uh, we have a little snack bar, you know, right off the stage here, you see. We went in to have a cup of coffee, and Van was a nervous wreck. He, uh, well, let me show you, let me show you what happened. Hey, uh, your hamburger is ready, Mr. Johnson. Oh, thanks, Tony. Lettuce, tomatoes, chili, cheese, pickles, relish. Say, Tony. Yeah? You forgot the hamburger. <laughs> you want to know something, Mr. Johnson? You're the first guy this week that caught on. <laughs> Here it is. Gee, I kind of hate to see it go. Oh, never mind, Tony. I'm too nervous to eat anyway. I'll just have some coffee. Here, here's a dime. Uh-oh, here comes Diamond Jim Brady. <laughs> oh, Van. Well, what's, 
matter? You're spilling all your coffee. I just can't help it, Jack. This television show has me so nervous I can't see straight. Well, look, why don't you just sit down and relax, and I'll, I'll join you in a little all while. Right. It's tough as bitter today, you know? You better put a lot of cream in it. You just strained the grease off the griddle. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. That'll be a dime for the coffee, please, Mr. Bennett. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gee, a Roosevelt dime. What's so strange about that? Teddy? <laughs> now, Van, Van, really, tell me, what's bothering you? Oh, Jack, I know it may sound childish to you, but I'd like to get off this show. But Van, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. There's nothing to it. Look, at once you do a live television show, you'll never do anything else. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Look, Van. Jack, let me tell you something. You know, when you do films, if you make a mistake, you can take it over again. You can take it over 20 times if you want to. But if you make one mistake on a live show, you're dead. Oh, it isn't that serious. <laughs> Look, Jack, why don't you just let me come in, stand up, take a bow, and go home? Huh? Stand up, take a bow, before the finish? How can you do that? Well, Shoemaker did it in the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Two bucks on it. <laughs> Look at man. You're nervous now. But when you get out there on that stage, you'll be fine. And anyway, the audience will be just tickled to death to see you. They'll be pulling for you. They will? Certainly. And anyway, you have ability. I mean, you've played before an audience. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Yeah. And, and anyway, I'll be standing there right alongside you. Oh, I guess you're right, Jack. Sir. I think I've been putting too much emphasis on it. You know, after all, it's only a show. That's all it is. That's the way to look at it. And uh, I, I, I'm beginning to feel better already, Jack. Of course, of course. There's nothing. I, I was a little nervous, but that's over. I'm fine now. Good, good. Now, Van, when we get attention, into the Attention, please, please. Attention, please. Jack, Benny, cast, and crew. Report to Studio 33 immediately. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's what happened yesterday. But last night, I spent three hours with Van and calmed him down. He's fine now. You know, I'm pretty convincing when I want to be. And after all, he, all of his stage fright is gone. And he's very, very anxious to come on. And here he is for the first time on live television, Van Johnson. Boy, Van. <laughs> Live, you know, you can't take it over again. <laughs> Look at Van. Last night you were you were so calm and everything. I mean, what happened? That's right, Jack. I was pretty calm last night, and then I went home and I kept getting up out of bed all night and going to the mirror and saying, Van, there's no need to be nervous. Now, tomorrow when you go on Jack's show, you're gonna be great. You'll be sensational. You'll make that Benny look like a bum. <laughs> All night long, it was the same thing. You're gonna be great. You're gonna be wonderful. There's nothing to worry about. Don't let that big hand, Jack Benny, bother you. Man, wait a minute. You said that to the mirror? No, my wife said that to me. <laughs> Your wife, Evie? Well, I thought Evie liked me. No. <laughs> anyway, that's so upset. I what I'm doing. <laughs> What'd you say, man? I said, I'm so upset, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't want you talking to a lad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but why? Oh, I don't know, Jack. You know, that's always been my, my trouble. I, I'm completely lacking in self-assurance. I have no confidence in myself. 
And the thought of standing out here with 70 million people watching me is pretty frightening. Oh, well, now, wait a minute, man. After all, I, you know, I haven't got 70 million viewers. I only have about 40 million. Well, with me on the show, you're a cinch to pick up another 30 million. <laughs> Well, for someone who has no confidence, you're certainly taking the right kind of pills. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, Jack, now that I've been out here for a while, I'm beginning to feel a little more secure. Well, that's good. That's good. And after all, there's no reason why the two of us shouldn't work very well together. We have so much in common. You mean your wife doesn't like you either? <laughs> Hey, no, what is this, uh, what is this that you, what do we, we mean have we have common? in common? Yeah, uh, what do you mean we Well, have? you know, we're the only two actors in Hollywood who were not in Around the World in 80 Days. <laughs> you know, I never thought of that. That's right, we weren't in that picture. How, how come, the band, how come you weren't in that picture? Well, it just happens that when they were casting that picture, I was off on a hunting trip in Australia. Where were you? On my knees in Mike Todd's office. <laughs> Well, now, look, man. Now, when we get to the finish of the show... Hello, Jack. Hello, Van. Yes. Listen, what, what are you doing here? Well, Jack, as you remember, a few months ago, I was the guest on the Shower of Stars, and, well, it was such a delightful experience, I just had to be here again. <laughs> it's such fun being on this show. It's just wonderful. <laughs> Well, Van, uh, uh, Vincent, I mean, that's very... You're Van. Uh, uh, Vincent. <laughs> Vincent, that's very, very flattering, but, I mean, if you'd have told me a week ago, I would have written you into the show. Oh, no, 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 Jack, that isn't the idea. That would have been imposing on you. No, I don't want the job. I just want to be here. <laughs> the atmosphere of this show is so casual and carefree and cozy. <laughs> The way you work with everybody, Jack. I just love it here, even if I only watch. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to watch, I can certainly get you a seat. A washer. Oh, no, 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 Jack, please, please, don't disturb anybody. I'll, I'll just stand to one side. <laughs> You're talented. Then, in the sketch... Jack, what? does that sort of thing happen very often on your no, show? No, no, it never happens. Oh. Look at Van. Well, look. Jack, doesn't it upset you? No, no. Gee, I wish I had your guts. <laughs> now, Van, look at When we do the sketch... Oh, by the way, Van, near the you know, I ran into your wife, Evie, this morning, and she was telling me about how frightened and nervous you were about appearing on the show with Jack. <laughs> Yes, you were so right. You should have seen me. I had more goose pimples and freckles. <laughs> well, I know exactly what you've been going through, because a few months ago when I was on the show, well, when I was on the show, I had the same feeling of inadequacy and unimportance, but it was so ridiculous because we did the show, and the next morning I found out that because of my appearance, he had picked up 30 million more viewers. <laughs> Will you two kids step aside and let mama look at boo-boo. <laughs> I am sorry, please forgive right, me. Go on right. with the show. Right. Now, Van, we're going to do the sketch oh, just before... Oh, incidentally, Jack. Yes. Jack, you know, um, I wanted to ask you something. When I was standing in the wings watching, well, I just wondered, have you changed writers? No, no, why do you ask? Well, because when I was on the show a few months ago, it seemed to me that the laughs were much bigger. <laughs> Bigger? 
I'm beginning to get nervous again. Van, let's not go through that. Look at you, we're calm oh, down. Man. And you didn't have to... Van, I have got to tell you about the special... <laughs> you see, I was in an isolation booth, and when I stepped out, my pant legs were rolled up to here. <laughs> The action was hilarious. <laughs> well, if that's all it takes. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> Look, I was kind enough, Vincent, to let you step out here and watch. Now, you ruined the whole routine here. Oh, Jack, I am sorry. That wasn't my intention. Believe me. I don't care what it was. Look, I don't need you to help me. And I don't have to have anybody help me. I can do this show alone. Hey, Jack, if that's the way you feel about it, I don't think you need me either. No, no wait, Van. Let's go back to the wagon and get some more coffee. Look oh, at, don't worry about Jack. He's a darling. No, wait a minute. I meant I didn't mean you. going on here, anyway? Corruptions <laughs> and nervousness and temperament. And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> I'm going to introduce one of the greatest singing stars in America. This lady's... I don't know, why am I mad at her? <laughs> uh, this lady's recordings have always been among the best sellers. And here she is, her nibs, Miss Georgia Gibbs. Grab your coat, get your hat, leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. Can't you hear that pitter pat? And that happy tune is your step. Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. Now I used to walk in the shade with my blue. On parade, baby, but I'm not afraid. Cause this rover, baby, I just crossed over. If I never have a sand, I'll be as rich as Rockefeller. Gold dust at my feet on the sunny side of the street.
your host for Chrysler Corporation, Bill Lundigan. Well, that's Reggie Gardner, the man who makes noises like trains and ships and things. Uh, uh, Reggie. Oh, hello, Bill. What are, you, what are you standing there with that wallpaper for? Shh, I'm listening. Listening? Listening to what? To the sounds of the wallpaper, of course. Are you kidding? No, lend me here. Take a look. See? <laughs> Get it? You know, that's remarkable. We can do the same thing with cars, too. Do you mean that you can deliver our message with sound and gestures? Sure. You tell it your way, I'll tell it mine. Oh, well, fine. You know, one of the reasons for the big switch this year to the cars of the forward look is Chrysler Corporation's leadership in engineering. Leadership that brings you the sensational new torsion air ride. And as you know, Reg, most of the other new cars still sway and lean on curves. <laughs> But Chrysler Corporation cars with torsion air go around the sharpest curves with practically no lean, no tilt. <laughs> and then, when you come to a stop, other cars dip and dive. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but with Chrysler Corporation's exclusive new torsion air ride, there's practically no dip, no dive. If you'll pardon me. I see that you do get the message. Oh, of course, Bill. After driving a Chrysler Corporation car myself, I know what you say is so true. Mm-hmm. And Chrysler Corporation cars like this swept wing Dodge take corners flat with practically no lean, no tilt. The roughest bumps and bounces disappear as torsion air ride carpets the road. And when you stop, our cars stay heads up while other cars dip and die. Torsion air ride is just one of the many engineering features you get only in Chrysler Corporation cars. You also get exclusive push-button torque flight, total contact brakes, and full-time power steering. Plus, proved economy as demonstrated in the mobile gas economy run with our unprecedented clean sweep victory. No wonder the switch is on from other makes of cars to the five great cars of the forward look. <laughs> Thank you, Reggie. And now, we return to Jack Benny and the second act of Shower of Stars. Tony, hurry up with my hamburger, will you? Because yeah, I, I gotta get it. back on stage. Okay, okay. Here you are. That'll be 35 cents, please. Yeah, I left all my money in my dressing room. Uh-uh. You left part of your money in your dressing room. All of your money, you could have leave in the Grand Canyon. Can I have a napkin, please? Well, sure. Here you are, Mr. Carlo. Oh! Come on! Join me, will you? Come on over here. Well... How do you like doing television after making so many movies, oh, Come on. I like it very much, Jack. Well, well, I understand you just finished a picture with uh, Clark Gable, is that right? Yes, it's called Band of Angels. Here, it's very good. <laughs> well, with uh, Clark Gable, how can it miss? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is pretty good, there's no question about it. How do you like working with me? Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I think I'm gonna like it. You know, your show tonight is coming along very, very well. <laughs> I think it's very funny. You do? <laughs> yeah, that Vincent Price is a scream. <laughs> He's not even on the show. <laughs> he only came here to watch. Well, he sure watches funny. <laughs> I don't, look, at, I don't care what he did. You and, and Georgia Gibbs and Van Johnson are my guests. I know, Jack. And I'm looking forward to the skit we're going to do a little bit later. Mm. Van Johnson, he's so attractive. Yeah. <sighs> you know, he's a fine actor and he's such a nice fella, but I can't figure out why all of you actresses are so crazy about him. Well, you've never kissed him. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's true. <laughs> but he, uh, but let me ask them, what, what has Van got? I mean, what, what has Van got that, that makes him so attractive to women? Well, I can't explain that to you, Jack. Why not? Well, you've either got it or you haven't got it. And if you haven't got it, it would be too depressing to explain it to you. <laughs> Let's forget about him. If he hasn't got it, that's his hard luck. <laughs> Morning, hot dog, please. Coming up. Hey, Mr. Kitzel. Hello, Mr. Jenny. How, my, my, my. How are you? With Wonderful. The... What are you doing here? What am I doing here? I'm on the Shower of Stars. Oh, with Vincent Price. <laughs> He's only watching. <laughs> Mr. Benny, yeah. that lady sitting over there, isn't that Ivan Di Carlo? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you know, she reminds me of my wife. She does? Yes, every time I look at my wife, I think, why couldn't she be Ivan Di Carlo? <laughs> well, you can't have everything. No. I'll see you later. Thank you. All right. Here's your hot dog, Calvin. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Here's your money. Wait a minute. This is the way you make a hot dog? What are you, a wise guy or something? You think you know how to do it better? <laughs> My good man, you certainly got cheap. Are you unaware to whom you speak? It was I who first created, if you're caring, the greatest thing since marinated hearing. I mean that pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. Just the way you like it and they're all red hot. Tasty little hot dog toasted right. With a bark as tender as its bite. Everybody's happy and they left her on side. Till the sun gets pickled in a sauerkraut sky. But what's a little raindrop when you got Pickle in the middle, sizzling off the griddle, pickle in the middle. Hip, hip, hooray for, hip, hip, hooray for. Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. Champagne dinner where the cork goes pop. In a little cozy rendezvous where a handsome man has taken you. Violins and candlelight will set the mood. And the waiter asks you how you like your food. Suddenly you da la 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 la. Pickle in the middle, pickle in the middle, pickle in the middle. Hip hip hooray for, hip hip hooray for. Pickle in the middle with the mustard on top. I am so embarrassed I could simply drop. How could any chef of my renown so have let his reputation down. Now I will be criticized and laughed about. Drummed out of the diner's club without a doubt. <laughs> I have served a hot dog made without. Pickle in the middle. Pickle in the middle. Pickle in the middle. Hip, hip, hooray for. Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. Just the way you like it and they're all red hot. More exotic uh, when you've got uh, pickle in the middle. Spices up your vittle. Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. And you got a nerve to call us such a concoction a hot dog? Shame on you. <laughs> Kissel, he's so cute. You know, a little while ago, I was walking down the hall, and he came right up to me and kissed me. And then he apologized. He said he thought I was his wife. <laughs> he's not only tricky, but cute. <laughs> or cute, but tricky. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> slight mistake. It doesn't mean I do. <laughs> you better get dressed for, your, for the next scene, for the sketch. Huh? All right, I'll Jack. See you, see you later. later. Okay. Cup of tea, please, Tony. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Gloria. Yeah, I've certainly enjoyed your, your, your number. Oh, you thank you, Jack. 
I see you're dressed for your second one, too. Are you hmm? kidding? I just finished my second number a few minutes ago. You did? Mm -hmm. Well, what's going on now on the show? I mean, what's that applause? Who's on the stage? Vincent Price. <laughs> what? It's a riot. He promised me he'd only watch the show. <laughs> Here's your famous Gibbs. Oh, Gee, I wish I could have seen you on the stage. I never get to see anybody. I'm stuck out here in this wagon all day long from early in the morning until late at night. I never get to see any shows. By the time I get home, it's so late. It's even too late to see the late, late shows. <laughs> all day long, I'm, I'm scrubbing the griddle, making coffee, making a hamburgers. Sometimes I feel like I want to sell this wagon and get out of show business. <laughs> Ironic. Here you are serving to all the greatest stars in the business and you never get to see them perform. Gee, don't you ever get any time off? You know, on Sunday evening between 7.30 and 8. Well, that's when the Jack Benny show is on. That's what's ironic. The one guy I can see, I can't stand. <laughs> How would you like it if I sang my brand new recording for you right now, huh? You know, every fan counts. I'll, uh, I'll stand right over here, huh? No, a stand down there and you'll gain an additional 30 million viewers. <laughs> It was just delightful the way you explained Chrysler Corporation's engineering leadership. Oh, thank you, Mary. I can do the same thing for Chrysler Corporation's styling, too. Uh, take this Plymouth, for instance. Styling? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Let's see you do the fins of the other two low-priced cars. Oh, no, no. No, no. Not for me, please. I know what you mean. They don't have a... Uh, uh, they don't uh, have a... Um, uh, a distinctive look. That's it, exactly. Ah, but the Plymouth fins have a real look of motion, a sleek, exciting look, don't you think? Pure caviar. Ah, uh, not only that, these handsome fins give you a more stable ride. Easier steering on windy days. Exactly. Because, you see, this is styling with a purpose. Styling that's right and looks it. Now, take the silhouettes of other makes of cars, for instance. Know what you mean. Their lines are, are interrupted, boxy, broken up. That's right. But the lines of the Plymouth uh. are clean... Smooth, unbroken, with a new, new lotus. This is truly the new shape of motion. The forward look. 
<laughs> like the inimitable Reggie Gardner just showed you, Plymouth offers smart new lowness, yet it's so easy to get into. And there's so much more room when you're inside. This is styling with a purpose, styling leadership. And another big reason why in every part of the country, the switch is on in the low price field to Plymouth. And now we present Jack Benny, Van Johnson, and Yvonne DiCarlo in a portrayal of life in the tropics. Our drama takes place on a banana plantation deep in the heart of the Central American jungle where the American manager and his wife brave the intense heat, the elements, the natives, and the terrible, terrible loneliness. And here to set you in the tropical mood is Jean Durand with the uh, Lester Horton dancers.
nothing but rain. And look at these horrible mosquitoes. Oh, why did I have to leave my comfortable home in Milwaukee to come to a miserable place like this? enough with this weather, but you, you have to go on with those ridiculous experiments, day in and day out, don't you realize? dear. You know, these experiments are my whole life. Well, they don't have to be mine. Just listen to that rain. Yeah. How long has it been coming down now? Well, we got here four years ago. It's been pouring ever since. <laughs> it's been four years since I watered the lawn? <laughs> oh, well, keep your fingers crossed, dear. This thing works, we may be home sooner than you think. I still say you've been wasting your time. You'll never be able to cross a banana with a coconut. <laughs> it's the laughing stock of the entire scientific world. Oh, yeah? Well, they laughed at Luther Burbank when he developed the grapefruit. They laughed at, at, at Fulton when he, when he invented the steamboat. They laughed at Edison when he invented, when he invented electricity. But he had the last laugh when they raise the rates. <laughs> Think what it will mean to humanity when I, when I can develop a skid-proof banana peel. <laughs> this may work, I shall try it once more. those tom-toms. The natives are getting restless again. You know, if you stay here any longer, you're going to end up like your last superintendent, Frisbee. Well, they're sending me a new superintendent. He'll be here pretty soon. What happened to Frisbee was his own fault. He didn't know how to handle the natives. He'd have been all right if he'd have had lost his head. <laughs> He was so fond of the, the new pith helmet his mother sent him. Don't worry, old man. We're going to continue with the good work. All right? All right. <laughs> Just listen to that rain. I'm going out of my mind. Gregory, this is the end. I'm leaving you. Shirley. Shirley, darling, you can't mean that. I've never meant anything more in my life. But what about the years that we spent together? What about the marriage vows? Surely you can't forget them, Shirley. I mean, surely you can't forget them, Shirley. <laughs> Those marriage vows never said anything about your crummy banana plantation. But you promised to love, honor, and obey. Till death do us part. Remember that. Till death do us part. Yes. Death to I can't go on living like this. Wait a minute. You can't think of taking your own life. I'm not. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> she doesn't kill a mosquito, I'm in trouble. <laughs> please, please, don't put away the gun. I'll let you go. I'll help you pack. I'll... Come in, quick! I'll help you. I'll help you. Please. 
Uh, are you Mr. Me. Harper, the manager? Yes. yes well, sir. I'm Bob Lawson, your new assistant. Well, how are you, Lawson? Glad to see you. I want you to meet my wife, Shirley. I mean, Shirley. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Decided to stay. I like it here. But you said. You said you couldn't stand it. Oh, it's not so bad. So it rains a little. <laughs> anyway, a wife's place should always be close to her husband. <laughs> You've had experience in this sort of thing. Oh, yes. The manager on my last job had a wife, too. <laughs> well, you'll find it pretty tough out here in the jungle. Many times your body will be racked with pain. I said pain! Stupid sound man. <laughs> you thought I said rain. <laughs> There's that darn leak again. I don't understand at all. We got a responsible job down here. You know, when I first came here, I didn't... What's that? Tom Tom. Is it the natives? Well, it ain't Desi on ass. <laughs> yeah, those natives are getting dangerous. They hate us. I know, they told me coming up here. They say that you brought evil to the jungle. They say that these experiments of yours are just a front, that you're really exporting Calypso singers. <laughs> what? They say the three lords and a duke are missing. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Oh, listen to those drums, I'm afraid. Hmm. They're coming a little closer. They're vicious and they're carrying spears. Spears? Ha! They're umbrellas. I tell you, they're spears. And we'll all be killed. Somebody's got to go out there and reason with them. I'll do it. Wait a minute. Are you crazy? Do you think I'd let you go out there and face those savages? This is a man's job. He'll go. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Watch out for the spear. Oh, look. Look, he's approaching them now. Oh, oh, they don't want to talk. They're attacking him. Oh, oh, he'll be killed. Quickly, quickly run for your life. Open the door. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I told you they weren't umbrellas. Oh, no. One argument. Oh, darling, what have they done to you? Quickly. Hey, wait a minute. They're closing in on us. Here. Here comes the native chief. Oh, we just take the bananas. As long as he comes, just take the bananas. Here. Chief. Chief. Chief, I would only be doing it. Then, son. What are you doing now? You were supposed to be watching. Well, Jack, I was. That's just what I was doing. I was standing in the wings watching, and somebody grabbed me and 
put me into this ridiculous outfit and shove me onto the stage. Well, why didn't you do something? Well, I was going to. But then I thought that this outfit might give the audience another chance to take a peek at my knee. <laughs> you spoil the whole sketch. Look, Gregory, we and have to I, get I, on It's with not you. Gregory, it's Jack. And I'm not going on with the show unless you get off the stage. You can't talk to me like that. I'm the chief. <laughs> I'll cut that out. All I wanted to do was to be in Jack's last shower. Wait a minute. What did you say? I said all I wanted to do was to be in your last shower. Well, I think I can fix that. Come on. <laughs> Rain! In just a moment, you'll meet Steve Cochran, Anna Maria Albergetti, Corinne Calve, and Carl Esmond in a preview of next week's exciting Climax program. And now, once again, your host, Bill Lundigan. Here's dramatic proof of Chrysler Corporation's engineering leadership. On that day, the five great cars of Chrysler Corporation made a clean sweep of the mobile gas economy run, winning every event. This has never before been achieved by any automobile manufacturer. The Imperial was first in both the overall sweepstakes and in Class D. The Class C winner was a Chrysler, with this DeSoto running a close second. The Class B winner was a Dodge, with Plymouth the winner in Class A. First in every event, Chrysler Corporation demonstrates proved performance and economy. Another reason why the switch is on to the cars of... Chrysler Corporation, also winner of Motor Trend Magazine's award for achievement. Let one of our dealers demonstrate this performance for you this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, Next on Climax, Bait for the Tiger. In next week's story, a beautiful young girl is held captive within the walls of an ancient castle on the French Riviera. Steve Cochran plays the part of Tom Wells, an adventurous young American determined to rescue Anna Maria Albergetti. Whether she is only Angel Corton, as he believes, or as she insists, the Comtesse Renée de Garac. I don't know what they've done to you, Angel. But I can't believe you really mean to go through with this, this swindle. Not of your own free will. Thomas, why do you doubt me? My silly, doubting Thomas. But I am René de Gaga. I don't believe that. You know I don't believe it. But you're in danger here. You've got to go away with me, now. No, Thomas. My place is here. Corinne Calve is a worthy partner for her husband, Paul, played by Carl Esmond. Paul? Yes, my dear. Uh, Paul, I think if it would help a plan that could interest Mr. Wells romantically. Only to keep him from falling in love with a girl, of course. Well, that would be fatal. Certainly. Mm-hmm. How well you understand. Next week on Climax, Bait for the Tiger, adapted for Climax by Whitfield Cook from a prize-winning novel by Nicholas Monserrat, starring Steve Cochran, Anna Maria Albergetti, Corinne Calve, and Carl Esmond. It's Bill Lundigan saying thank you, and remember, traffic control begins at your wheel. And now, back to our guest stars for tonight. He was supposed to pay us before we left the show. That's right. That was the deal. He said he'd pay us before he left the studio. Where is he? Hey, there he is now. <laughs> All right, here. Here you Thank you. 
Thank you very, very well, much. Thank you, Judge. You so thank long, Ben. Good night. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Goodbye, girl. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, this was the last shower, but I'll be seeing you on my own show. Be sure and watch the Mars and Gower Champion next Sunday. I'll be seeing you on my own show a week from Sunday night. Thank you. of Evil, starring Vera Miles, John Forsyth, Mary Anderson. And on May 30th, The Disappearance of Amanda Blake, starring Miriam Hopkins, Lloyd Bridges, Carolyn Jones, Alexander Scorby. Week after week, top drama, top stars on Climax and Shower of Stars. has been brought to you by Chrysler Corporation, maker of these five great cars. Plymouth. Dodge. DeSoto. Chrysler. And the exclusive Imperial. The forward look. Chrysler Corporation. Your call could save a city. Yes, it's true. If you were a volunteer in the Ground Observer Corps, you could give the warning call that might save a city. Our military forces are on guard 24 hours a day, but if an air attack comes, they must have warning. Your Air Force needs you as a plane spotter. Join Skywatch. Call Civil Defense. Art Gilmore speaking. Portions of the preceding program were pre-recorded. Shower of Stars has been selected for viewing by our armed forces overseas. Stay tuned for Playhouse 90 on the CBS Television Network.